Hi, in today's video, we will be discussing the major exam slides in the MBBS practical exam. Usually in the MBBS exams, they have practical slides which are kept for discussion and uh, it's a common practice to have a clinical history with them. So I will help you track down the slides, break it down and uh, with the help of the history, how to diagnose the slides. So let us see now. The history is a 44 year old female with a pigmented lesion over the leg. So now you remember that there is a pigmented lesion over the leg and what you find here is that there are cells here which are rich in melanin pigment. You are of course not able to make out the nucleus here but if you were to see the nucleus it would be a nice uh, eosinophilic prominent nuclei right and this at the onset it looks like these cells are infiltrating everywhere right they are not very organized they are moving here and there. So for the MBBS level this is a malignant melanoma. So you have to remember that this is a malignant melanoma. All right. So the next uh, slide is uh, that of a 10 year old boy with history of pain in the right iliac fossa mass. So at the MBBS level when you have a patient with a right iliac fossa mass, first that hint itself will tell you this is appendix. So you are dealing with appendix and you find that there is a specimen of cut section of appendix and the diagnostic feature is that there should be uh, inflammatory cell infiltrate of neutrophils infiltrating the muscular propria. That is when you diagnose a acute appendicitis. In the microscopy what you find is that there is the mucosal glands with lot of blue cells. These are nothing but the neutrophils. Acute appendicitis. Next case is uh, case 3 swelling in the neck with evening rise of temperature. What you find here is that you have caseous necrosis in the slide. You have uh, a Langhan type giant cells. You have here a slipper shaped nuclei of the epithelioid cells. All this put together it points towards a tuberculous granuloma and the history also is very classical. It is history with evening rise of temperature. It's tuberculous lymphadenitis. Next a 22 year old female presenting with a pelvic mass. Whenever the history mentions a pelvic mass for the MBBS level I am just telling you again it could point towards a ovarian mass and what you find here is that there is a helter skelter arrangement, haphazard arrangement. You have the cartilage tissue here, you have the epidermal ep with uh, appendages with the keratin here and you also find some glandular element here. So all this put together is a teratoma. Teratoma is a tissue having uh, more than two lineages of uh, germ cells. So you have more than two lineages here. This is a teratoma. Next uh, case is a painful swelling in the forearm and what you find here is that there is arrangement of uh, cells here. Uh, arrangement of cells in the Antony and Antony B pattern. So that is not senior Antony a pattern is in fact seen here and in fact it's not a very good slide but you should be able to appreciate the veruque bodies here. Some kind of palisading is there, a kind of veruque bodies, right. So this is a slide of a schwannoma. Schwannomas are painful swelling. So history is of that of a painful swelling and usually they will have Antony A areas with the veruque bodies and Antony B areas with the myxoid area which are the looser areas. Next a very common slide subcutaneous swelling over the nape of neck. Over the nape of neck if you have a swelling like this and if you see in the microscope it just adipose tissue. So it is a lipoma. Lipoma is a well encapsulated lesion with a mature adipose tissue lobules circulated by delicate fibrovascular septic. It is a lipoma. Next 70 year old ma male presenting with a colonic mass. So history is very clear colonic mass in the MBBS level. 70 year old male you are dealing with a adenocarcinoma probably and what you find here is the normal colonic tissue. You find here the atypical malignant glands here. These glands have high nucleocytoplasmic ratio. You can find the nucleus stratification and hyperchromasia. They are more darkly stained compared to the normal colonic glands here. These glands have the mucus within them. These glands do not have the mucus within them. This is the adenocarcinoma of the colon. Next case is that of a patient suffering from a chronic renal disease and what you find here is the glomeruli are here and you have some sclerosed glomeruli here. 
sclerosed glomeruli are the ones where you do not observe the glomerulus and you find here that the tubules have got thyroid there is colloid thyroidization of the tubules colloid like material is there and there is inflammatory cell infiltrate within the interstitium these are the bluish cells here in the interstitium all this put together are features of chronic pyelonephritis next is that of a 24 year old female with endometrial curettings you find that the glands are very tubular and you have mitosis here in the within the lumen of the glands and there is compact stroma these are features again there is a mitosis here mitosis are very important features to diagnose a proliferative endometrium coming with a female patient with history of primary infertility and endometrial curating so find the history of primary infertility is mentioned but you don't find anything abnormal here uh, usually with that history you would like to look for granulomas but here we do not find that but what you find here is that there is subnuclear vacillations and the glands are nice here tortuous and the edematous stroma is there this is a secretory endometrium right next coming to a 34 year old female with history of dysmenorrhea what i do see in this uh, slide is that there are islands of myometrial tissue and in between that i have endometrial the other way around there is myometrial tissue within which there is islands of endometrial tissue so this becomes adenomyosis adenomyosis is when there is foci of endometrial glands and stroma within the myometrium next a very common slide in the mbbs exam is a 36 year old female with history of amenorrhea this three months usually this patient will have passage of grape like vesicles what you find here are voluminous huge chorionic villi with hydropic change right with cytotrophoblastic uh, and syncytiotrophoblastic proliferation which is circumferential all over and this is a hydratiform mole hydratiform mole can be of different types complete mole and partial mole and here we do not find the nucleated rbcs it's more or less circumferential trophoblastic elements so this is a hydratiform mole of the complete type next history of 39 year old female with history of dysmenorrhea and dysfunctional uterine bleeding what you find here is a, a nice tumor comprised of smooth muscle uh, fibers in crisscrossing fascicles this is likely to be a leomyoma right leomyoma slide can also be kept for hyaline change exactly next we have a 40 year old female with a mass abdomen what you find here is that this is a cyst so again uh, mass abdomen it's a, a huge area right but uh, usually female patient mass abdomen think of ovary and you have a nice mucinous glands here at one end which okay and a lot of mucin them so this is likely to be a mucinous cyst adenoma of ovary 55 year old female with a history of lump in the breast and nipple retraction and what you're finding here are the ducts and you find infiltrating nests of tumor cells and definitely there is infiltration everywhere you can see them here even here right and the some tubule formation the nuclei look very hypochromatic so this is uh, going to be an infiltrating duct carcinoma of the breast 25 year female young female with a lump in the breast what you find here is that uh, there is going to be a uh, yeah the pattern here if you see is that of intracanalicular pattern of the ducts which are compressed by the proliferation of the stroma this is going to be a fibroadenoma of the breast 35 year old male patient with testicular mass and what you find is nests of glycogen rich cells with a clear cytoplasm having fibrovascular septae rich in lymphocytes rich in plasma cells and this is likely to be a testicular tumor and this is a seminoma next case is that of a 65 year old male with history of difficulty in micturition and what you find here is that there is enlargement of the yeah, definitely prostatic tissue we find with hyperplasia 
enlargement of the gland, hyperplasia of the gland with the stroma. All right. And if you were to see in the microscope, they will have a dual layer of uh, the epithelial cells and the basal cells. Basal cells will also be present, and then this becomes the adenomyomatous hyperplasia of the prostate. Another very common slide, all the examiners love this slide, is that of a 32 year old female with history of midline neck swelling. You have nice uh, glands filled with colloid, flattened cuboidal cells. This is a colloid goiter. And yeah, very obvious. It's a colloid goiter, multinodular goiter. Next, we have a 30 year old female with a solitary thyroid nodule. What you find here is papillary configuration, orphan anti-nuclei, which are the optical clear nuclei, fibrovascular cores, papillae are very obvious here. This is a papillae finger like projection, is a papillae, and the nuclei have the orphan anti-nuclei. So these are the points for you to identify it as a papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. It is very common in females. In the first presentation of it can be in the form of an enlarged lymph node with meds, which is then called as a lateral aberrant thyroid. Next case is that of a 52 year old male with an ulceroproliferative lesion in the foot. What you find here are islands of epithelial cells which have keratin pearls. These are the keratin pearls inside epithelial whorls or these epithelial cells and whorls with keratin pearls, right? And they are in well defined nests and it is infiltrating everywhere. This is going to be a squamous cell carcinoma. From the look of it, it is a well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Coming to some hematology uh, slides kept usually 28 year old pregnant women with generalized weakness, easy fatigability. What you find here is there is for a reference a small lymphocyte. Small lymphocyte, remember, is the ruler. Hemat slides, in fact, are difficult than histopath slides, so I'll explain in more detail. So, there is a small lymphocyte which will be kept as a ruler for you. Now, you have to compare this RBC with that of the small lymphocyte, and you find that this is smaller than the small lymphocyte, which is microcytic. Hypochromia in this case, there is hypochromia because normal red blood cell should have one third central pallor here the central pallor is definitely more than one third so this is a microcytic hypochromic cell and this will be a microcytic hypochromic anemia right microcytic size of the rbc is less hypochromia there is more than one third central pallor all right microcytic hypochromic anemia next a 45 year old male with hepatosplenomegaly so what do you find here is you have a different kinds of cells here, multitude of cells, right? And what you find here, there are neutrophils. This is a band form. This looks like a myelocyte, a myelocyte. These look like metamyelocytes. The indentation is less than half. So this is a metamyelocyte. And what else do you find here? So you have a blast. This looks like a blast. So there are a multitude of cells here. I am in fact looking for a eosinophil here. I can't find in this photomicrograph. I should have found one or two eosinophils as well, one or two basophils as well. Then I am very comfortable calling it a chronic myeloid leukemia. Right? For chronic myeloid leukemia, going back to the slide, you will have to do a uh, translocation 922. The Philadelphia chromosome is positive. Coming to a 60 year old female with generalized lymphadenopathy, so you find here that there are a lot of lymphocytes. First observation, a lot of lymphoid cells, and to, on a casual look, they look normal, but they look a bit atypical. So, and then what you find here are smut cells, and the history is very clear here 60 year old female. So, go by the history also, and the history is very clear for you that the history is that of a 60 year old female. So, female patient, elderly patient, 60 years. With generalized lymphadenopathy, lymph nodes are enlarged. All that points towards a chronic lymphoid leukemia. All right. Next, you have a nine-year-old boy presenting with history of fever, of acute onset, and gum bleeding. What is shown in the picture is a blast. Right. What blast is this? There is an overrot here. A U E R overrots. You have three nuclei here. Another overrot here. So these are a acute leukemia probably an acute myeloid leukemia because of the overrot so they will help you identify them as acute myeloid leukemia 
the way to differentiate from acute lipoblastic leukemia is by doing the cyto uh, chemistry stains which is mpo sudan black and pass so acute lymphoblastic leukemias will be pass positive they show block and chunky positivity whereas the myeloid leukemias they are positive for myeloperoxidase and sudan black b that is the answer that you will be giving and usually lymphoblasts have one nucleoli myeloblasts have three nucleoli all right and of course for typing you should go for a, a flow cytometry analysis has to be done for exact typing of the leukemias another feature in this history is a nine year old boy acute lymphoblastic leukemias tend to be common in the young children all right acute leukemia is enough for your exam point of view even if you say acute leukemia it's enough and the examiner will further ask you the differences nobody is going to penalize you if you do not diagnose it as long as you identify as acute leukemia and you're able to give the differences the examiner should be pleased next history is that of a 10 year old boy with history of passing worms in stools you find lot of eosinophils here in this field so it's a eosinophilia causes of eosinophilia can be parasitic infestation lawful syndrome hodgkin's lymphoma all right hay fever asthma eosinophilia coming to the next slide is that of a 32 year old male with glossitis knuckle pigmentation and what you find is a hyper segmented neutrophil with more than five lobes one two three four five six lobes macrocytes are here the cells are round and oval macrocytes are there so uh, how do you compare again this is the lymphocyte for your reference and this cell is definitely a little larger and oval in shape so this is an uh, history also is very clear as glossitis so glossitis goes for vitamin b12 deficiency knuckle pigmentation again goes for vitamin b12 deficiency so this is a case of macrocytic anemia all right so this is a very quick rapid fire of the common mbbs practical exam slides you can have other slides as well but usually in my experience these are the common slides which they keep for the mbbs exam as always go by the clinical history also and uh, uh, you should do well all the best for your exams bye and please like and subscribe this channel